This is a digital elevation model of the San Francisco Peaks volcanic field. There are over 600 volcanic edifices. This landscape would be pretty much flat without the volcanoes on it. So every prominence you see here is a volcano of some type. A cinder cone is a volcano built from loose volcanic fragments that are cinder-sized and larger. They rarely grow taller than about 300 meters, or roughly 1,000 feet, and are typically produced by a single eruptive sequence lasting anywhere from six months to a decade or two. The key to understanding cinder cone formation is volcanic gas. Magmas contain anywhere from 1 to 6 percent dissolved gas. When magma rises within a few hundred meters of the Earth's surface, expanding gas is what powers volcanic explosions. All right, this is your classic science fair inaccurate pretend volcano using baking soda and vinegar. Now this is one of my least favorite science demos. I mean, it looks cool. You've got bubbles coming out of the volcano. Bubbles do power volcanic eruptions. But it's really not a, at all an accurate sort of description of what's going on. This demonstration is what's called a bubble bomb. And again, it's not a really accurate description of what happens in volcanic processes. It's still a chemical reaction. It's baking soda and vinegar just like our, our fake volcano, except this time we're going to contain it. So the, the whole point here is to demonstrate the kind of power that can be produced by expanding gas. And there we have it. A much better model for what goes on in volcanoes is just a big old bottle of clear soda. And I bet most of you will know what happens when we take the lid off, but let's go ahead and do this. And these bubbles are carbon dioxide gas that was dissolved in the soda under pressure back at the soda factory. And the soda isn't terribly viscous, so these bubbles are rising very rapidly. In a magma, of course, it's much thicker, uh, you know, typically a thousand times thicker than water. So the bubbles rise much, much more slowly. Okay, now we're going to take a... Uh, a bottle that's been shaken a little bit so that the gas will escape more rapidly. And that basically is what happens in a volcano. It's hard to imagine bubbles being able to blow the tops off of entire mountains, but that's exactly what happens. If magma rises rapidly to the Earth's surface, the bubbles are carried with it and escape at a uniform rate. This produces a fire fountain. Things get more interesting if the bubbles rise faster than the magma. This results in what's called Strombolian volcanic activity, named for Stromboli volcano in Italy. Cinder cones are constructed by Strombolian eruptions. When bubbles rise through a column of magma, the larger bubbles rise more rapidly than the others because of their lower surface-to-volume ratio. As larger bubbles capture smaller ones, they become even larger and rise faster still. Eventually, a very large bubble or collection of a few bubbles will fill the width of the conduit. This is called a slug. When the slug reaches the surface, it pops, producing a volcanic explosion. Slugs may develop relatively uniform spacing within the conduit, which produces a rhythmic explosion pattern in Strombolian eruptions. Typically, these explosions will occur every 30 seconds to 5 or 6 minutes, depending on the volcano. 
This video clip recorded by Raphael Verndli from Yasser Volcano shows small-scale Strombolian activity. During cinder cone construction, with each explosion, fine material is wafted away by the wind, while pea-sized and larger fragments fall on the flanks of the cone. Each layer in a cinder cone thus represents the deposits from one volcanic explosion. Another key concept for understanding cinder cones is that of the angle of repose, the steepest stable slope that can be held up by loose material under the pull of gravity. Let's demonstrate by making a pile of volcanic cinders. One of the neat things about cinder cones is that everywhere on Earth they start out with sides that slope roughly 33 degrees. Over time, erosion will slowly flatten them out, and you can easily tell younger from older cones at a glance. Finally, in many eruptive sequences, much of the gas escapes early on, and Strombolian activity eventually ceases. The final eruptive phase is typically a lava flow. The cone of loose material is not strong enough to support a column of lava, so the final flow will typically break out of the base, in some cases rafting part of the cone off with it. The San Francisco Peaks volcanic field is a fantastic place to explore cinder cones. Examples range in age from 5.5 million to only 1,000 years old, with most eruptive processes represented somewhere within the area.